This week we're going to be machining a new bearing block for the screen print upgrade. You can see I'm using my new Sonda Machine Works mod vise. This vise is perfect for when you want to machine all the way around a part like you can see I'm doing here. And then I can just flip it over, I can run a facing operation and then I've got the part done. Next I just take it over to the drill press to do all of the drilling operations. And this is why I love a 3D printer. You can create your own jigs to help you with marking out. You can see that this is just at an awkward angle. It was hard to measure. So I just printed it and I put a little hole exactly where I needed to put my center punch. And you can see that I also 3D printed this little jig, which just holds the part at the right angle for that drilling. You can use metal nuts. I spend an absolute small fortune on nuts and bolts for all of these projects. So whenever I can use 3D printed nuts in place of metal nuts, I'm going to. These nuts don't really secure anything. They just act as spacers for the bearings. And that's why I've gone with a 3D printed version here. I was just getting ready to finish up my squeegee arm upgrade video and I thought I would do a bit of a comparison in the process. So I've got one machined out of aluminium and then I also 3D printed one. And I just thought, you know, I'd see if the 3D print would hold up um, over time. I was expecting to make this video in like three or six months time. I've just put it on and I've literally pulled this squeegee back the first time and the 3D print has snapped. Now, this was printed with 35% infill density, and it was printed with eight walls and 10 layers top and bottom. So it's a pretty chunky 3D print. I was really expecting it to do much better than this. Yeah, this is just snapped off. I mean, it will literally, yeah, you can see. There we go, so it's definitely snapped off. I think if you are making parts like this for anything that's going to be under high load or stress, if you've got the if you've got the option to machine it out of aluminium, then I would just machine it out of aluminium. But yeah, not very good. So I'm gonna to have to get back on the CNC and I'm gonna to have to machine just another bearing block out of aluminium. We finally got there in the end. I've got two bearing blocks on this now and it moves much better compared to the bearing blocks that we had on previously. I'm guessing I was right and that it's probably something to do with the surface area that's making contact with the steel rod. The bearing blocks that I originally had, obviously they got tiny ball bearings in them. And I'm guessing just that increased surface area is what stops it from just binding on these corners when I'm pulling it. Previously, I had to make sure that I kind of held it from the middle. There was just too much leverage on the, on the when I was holding it right at the end. But now, as you'll see in the examples, uh, I can just move it backwards and forwards with one hand just at the, at the very end of the handle. And another thing that is better with making bearing blocks like this, especially for this type of mechanism, is that you can use a thicker tube, which means that it will be more sturdy. Now, I didn't want to buy a thicker tube because this cost me enough. I think this was like 20 pound. Um, it does actually have some flex. You can see that this is 20 mil thick steel rod and even this, it will kind of bend in the middle. Um, you can get, you know, really nice thick, like 50 mil scaffolding poles. That's typically what you would see in a, in a build like this. And they're obviously going to be much sturdier. The reason why I didn't do that originally is because it's just very hard to find uh, the linear blocks, the exact diameter for the tubes that you can get. Uh, obviously, if you're making your own, you can just build whatever diameter you need. So I think that we are finally there with this build. Uh, everything is working as I need it to. And now we can just get on with printing. If you're interested in how I made these linear blocks, 
I'm gonna do a very quick Fusion 360 tutorial showing you how I designed it. Hopefully it will be helpful for beginners to Fusion and understanding CAD design. I'm a beginner myself, but I thought I would put together a tutorial because I couldn't find anything on the internet specifically for designing something like this. So stay tuned for more videos. I'm currently working on doing a uh, coolant upgrade for my CNC. Now that I've got the screen print table fixed, I can now start printing our seventh cassette release. And that's probably gonna be it for the next uh, few weeks. I'm probably gonna be busy doing that. But if you've got any questions, as usual, feel free to ask. If you enjoyed the content, remember to like and subscribe. It really does help to grow the channel and to also tell me what type of content you like. Um, but that is it for today. I'll catch you later.